There was a Shaolin Showdown video game? Yeah, there was. And you can't tell me that if you watched this show growing up that you didn't want to play as the Shaolin Warriors and kick some butt. Konami and Bottle Rocket Entertainment knew that, and so they got to work with the license of the property for the game to bring Shaolin Showdown to life in this 3D landscape with the official game of the same name on November 14th, 2006. That's pretty hype. So today, I wanted to revisit and check out this game, what it's all about, if it's able to capture the feeling of the show, and if it holds up, essentially. Welcome back to the 25 Days of Fringe Miss, where there's going to be brand new- Wait, 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 wait. Uh-uh. Ah. Double Fringe Miss. Aw, you only thought you were gonna get 25 videos this year? Look at you. You look silly. But I'm here to fix that, because I'm gonna give you not only 25 videos, but I'm giving you 50 videos. I have two channels. That's two Fringe Misses. Each day, there'll be a brand new video on both channels for 25 days. I haven't slept in months. Enjoy the content. Or don't. So Shaolin Showdown, it's a 3D fighting game that lets you brawl around the different set stages as you initially play as our main four here. Omi, Raimundo, Kimiko, and Clay, as you take down a bunch of enemies that get thrown in your direction. What's nice is that you all fight together, so no matter who you choose to play as, the others are also playing as well and controlled by the computer so you can feel like a powerful group and defeat the enemies as a team. The levels themselves are these rectangular sectioned out zones that you'll run back and forth dealing with the extra stage hazards, and even objects that could be picked up and used as a projectile, making the map itself feel a bit dynamic to the situation and not leaving it just feeling overall too bland. Throughout these stages, scrolls will appear and you need to collect those while you beat up the enemies to continue moving forward. Eventually, a Shengan Wu will appear on the stage and you all get into a mini game over it and whoever wins gets that item. But there is also a wager system that lets you put up other Shengan Wu to hopefully win other wagered ones from the other characters. There are 12 of these mini games that serve as a big Shaolin showdown moment. But as you go on, you start to notice that there are only a few of them on rotation, only adding slight variations like having it, which is a game of tag, and that evolves into a version of that, where the person who is it gets attacked by some enemies, and then it becomes two people being it at the same time. So a little light on the showdown variations, but the changes to each version of them at least make it not feel the exact same. Some Shengan Wu can be purchased through blessing coins to help you in general in the game. Plus there are a bunch of power-ups that appear that either aid in your health, increase your chi, give you faster movement speed, offer you some defense boosts, and more. In addition to this, you'll also get points awarded based on how you performed in the level and showdown, leading to earning rank titles through these points, which ultimately leads the reason to really keep playing the game more and more since when it comes to story or content, it's a bit light. Luckily, you can play the game with up to four players and have some fun that way. There are also bonus level mini games that get triggered thanks to the Yin Yang Yo Yo Shin Gan Wu that puts you on a 2D playing field where you try to get as many blessing coins and power-ups and reach the yo-yo again before time runs out, and then you'll be able to keep everything you acquired, which is sick because that can literally make you feel invincible. Plus, multiples of one power-up can stack for longer uses of them. That's a pretty dang good system to have a lot of fun with. There's two different modes in the game in general, where Adventure Mode plays out the way I just described, and then there's Showdown Mode, where you can play on selected levels you unlocked that won't affect the main Adventure Mode. As far as the levels go, there are six worlds in general that have different sectioned out levels to progress through. Each of the monks you play as have their own unique moveset, and a signature move that doesn't make the characters feel like clones of each other. And something cool is that there are two other playable characters to unlock as you make your way through the Adventure Mode. First is Jack Spicer, one of the main villains from the show, and you'll get access to play as him by defeating him in the game, and then there is Chase Young, another villain from the show, and you get him as a playable character once you beat the game. So I appreciate that the game gives you a bit more by having these secret characters to play as later on. But what about the plot of the game? Is there something story-wise that makes the game have more of a connection to the cartoon itself? This Double Fringe Miss is brought to you by Gamer Subs. I just got one word for you, but come close, you gotta make sure you listen to this one. Use code FRINGE for 10% off of Gamer Subs. Look, the choice is yours. You can either pay an extra 10% or you can save the 10%. Use code FRINGE. Gamer subs. The story just kind of starts as a bunch of Shengan Wu scrolls were all dropped and broken by Dojo, the cool and fun dragon from the show, leading to the Shaolin monks here heading out to the different areas they are at to assemble the three pieces in each area to fix the scrolls and collect them back. Jack Spicer comes along wanting all the Shengan Wu for himself, of course, that's what bad guys do. So after you spend time fighting his Jackbots and making your way through the game, Jack continues his plans and works with the ancient evil spirit known as Wuya as you proceed to fight off and deal with them. The game 
thing gets both kind of fun and kind of weird when you get to progress through the story inside of Dojo himself, figuring out what's inside of him and making him feel so sick and in pain. It's just cool level design and I appreciate the efforts in trying to do something unique here. But if dealing with Jack and Wuya wasn't enough, Chase Young joins in the game, as he is searching for the Heart of Zhang, a specific Shengang Wu that has the power to combine other Shengang Wu in relation to it to summon and give life to Mala Mala Zhang, this ancient warrior, and you make your way through more levels and try to catch up to Chase and stop his plans. When you finally get to Chase, you find out that all three of the bad guys here, Chase, Jack, and Wuya, are working together and plan to take the monks out. Unfortunately, you aren't able to stop them summoning Mala Mala Zhang, but you work together to fight back and destroy the heart of Zhang to take this ancient warrior down and ruin the bad guy's plans. And that's it. The game just ends. Honestly, that seems on brand for the game itself. There are no cutscenes in the game to understand the story or really understand anything. You only learn about what you're doing in the story or how to play the showdowns as they are happening. Not from an explanation given to you before you start, but while you are actively doing it. This is all thanks to Dojo who explains why we are at certain levels in the game or who the bad guys are through voiceover and occasionally popping up in front of the screen while you're playing. You just kind of go places and do the same thing while the plot treats you as both already familiar with the property and also new to it. Introducing concepts and characters as if you don't know who they are, but jumping through the levels and explanations of the gameplay as if you know exactly what to do. It's very weird and it comes off very budgeted to get done. The amount of awkward moments of the game just kind of pausing us as if there is a major cutscene or moment happening just to kind of figure out points by the end of the level feels unpolished and a complete afterthought. I like that there are so many Shengan Wu in the game and the cool bonuses and powers that come from them and the power-ups in general, but it all feels a bit too clunky and not so fluid to control. From the presentation to what you are doing as gameplay from level to level all just feel very cut and paste. We need this game out and on shelves and hopefully young fans of the game will just enjoy it because it's from the property. Heck, I probably would have fun if I was younger, especially playing with other friends and not the computer controlling the other characters, but it's really so bare bones and I don't think it represents nor respects the show it's based on. It feels like Warner Bros said, here is some limited detail about the show, a handful of characters, some Shengan Wu concepts, and we need this done tomorrow. Thanks. I just don't feel the love here in this game that I feel in some other cartoon-based video games. Yeah, like I said, there are some cool things the characters you play as feel like they represent their show counterpart and have unique moves, but the levels aren't varied enough minus one really cool area that it gets boring, feeling like you're in similar sized areas, fighting hordes of enemies, collecting what you need to collect, having a Shaolin showdown, rinse and repeat. It doesn't progress upwards, it continues in stagnation. I was hoping that revisiting this game for the first first time in such a long time would have led me to something special, or at the bare minimum something fun, but the longer you play, the less fun it gets. It's also just very short, which to be fair, most cartoon show based video games are, but the repetitive nature makes it feel so much longer than it is in a bad way. The ranking system offers some incentive to keep you playing, and if you have some friends to play with, there is some more limited time fun there, but it's not enough to make this game at all worth it. The story is nothing but pulling points from the show that the game poorly explains or even shows for that matter, and the gameplay isn't something you haven't seen before and done better elsewhere. I would love a real, proper, fully fleshed out Shaolin Showdown game. But as far as the 2006 video game goes, this isn't that great for both just being a pretty mediocre game and one that doesn't represent the show it's based on all that well. But what do you think about it? Have you ever played this game and if so, did you find enjoyment in it? Were there memorable moments in it for you or just plain fond memories of playing it with or without friends? Let me know in the comments. I've been Jordan Fringe. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Later.